novel spatiotemporal FCN LSTM network for recognizing various crop types using multi-temporal radar images. This project is a part of Future Cropping, a project with nine different work packages, and our project belongs to work package eight about uh, intelligent harvesting. And we have different purposes like uh, analyzing a satellite data for recognizing crop types in Denmark, estimate uh, biomass activity, and predict uh, yield in winter wheat, and also extract a protein map. Uh, from the satellite data. A number of company and university involved and collaborate with each other in this project, uh, such as Copenhagen, Uni Copenhagen University, Aarhus University, such as company, uh, for instance, Yara, Agrointelli, and other companies, and Innovation Fund Denmark with total budget of uh, uh, about 100 million kron uh, supported this project, I mean future cropping project. This is the Sentinel satellite data that we uh, are using in this data set uh, to, to get the purposes we have in this project. And these images require calibration and pre-processing before any analysis. And uh, this, this pre-processing uh, including uh, Turian correction, radiometric correction for getting a radar backscatter from the digital pixel value and also remove some of the noise like a thermal noise and speckle noise that are uh, very common and popular noise in, in the uh, radar images. And then you have images, pre-processed data or images that you can analyze it. Uh, we developed a website, Field Babel, uh, in our group I mean signal processing group at Aarhus University that do all of the disk pre-processing. Just you need to have a one valid email address and you need to select the region you want in Denmark, for instance, to analyze and then you have all of the pre-processed Sentinel-1 data set. And uh, the Sentinel-1 data set has two, uh, the Sentinel-1 satellite has two uh, uh, different band, uh, namely VV and VH. And in these images, you can see the VV and VH uh, in the, these four images in January 2017, February, July, and August. And different crop types represent the different colors. And these color changes uh, from one image to another. So we have a time series data set. And if we can extract it, this information, I mean, uh, spatial information from the each images or follow the changes between the images for the different times, then we have valuable information or data set that we can use it uh, to, uh, that we can use it uh, for training the network to uh, recognize the different crop types. <clears throat> the objective of uh, this part of the project or the paper we uh, recently published in remote sensing journal is developing a system based on deep learning approach uh, which analyzes C-band Sentinel-1 images or data to identify 14 different and important crop types in Denmark plus background. Uh, I have to mention that the background is one of the interesting classes and also hard cases because it includes some uh, subclasses like, uh, for instance, broad, building, lake, sea, and uh, forest in the images. So the variance in the, uh, into these classes are high between the subclasses. So it's a bit difficult to, to train the network based on the these classes. But the results show that our approach could train very well with these classes and separate the background from the other classes with a high performance. This is the covered area in Denmark, and the red color zone uh, or area shows, uh, or we, we use the, these color zones to uh, train the network with uh, uh, 500,000 hectare, about 500,000 hectare, and also the blue ones shows the test area, and we you, we were selected this area for uh, testing the network uh, with the area of uh, more than 250,000 hectare. So. We can uh, see that we analyze the big area in Denmark to train the network and then to evaluate the network. 
this is the proposed structure of the network and this structure uh, is made up two main parts the first one is a fully convolutional neural network, this part, and the second one is a recurrent neural network or convolutional LSTM. We have an input data set, we fit them to the series of the convolution and pooling layer to extract all of the important features for each of these specific images, and then we use the upsampling layer to create a feature map with the same spatial resolution as input, and then we put the metadata information from the satellite and finally we fit the these data set i mean this information or feature map to the convolutional lstm to extract the, all of the dependency between the time series data or sequential data so the second part extracted temporal information and we use the this structure to train and one of the important thing about the, this uh, paper is it tr this network trained from scratch so we didn't use the pre-trained model and finally we had a uh, 15 different classes include background the second part of the network as I uh, mentioned in the uh, last slide uh, I mean in the previous slide uh, is a convolutional LSTM or LSTM that is an improvement over recurrent neural network and it uses to process the sequential data or anywhere you need to uh, detect the long-term dependency between the data set you have like a video clip and if you want to extract the, this important feature from the time series data or in, for instance in the different frames in the video then the one of the best option is to uh, using analyze uh, is to use analyze convolutional uh, is to use uh, convolutional LSTM so uh, this is important for the network if, if you want to extract the temporal information and each cell in LSTM contains a three different gate input for get and output and also uh, the input of the this LSTM and output of LSTM and memory cell. Uh, I don't want to uh, explain all of the, this mathematical equation in detail, just I wanted to show you uh, the second part of the network is a convolutional LSTM with the, this mathematical equation. Uh, so if you need any, uh, if you want to get any information about the convolutional LSTM, you can refer to our paper. That published recently and I uh, added a lot of information about the convolutional LSTM and how each cell uh, works. So the aim of the using convolutional LSTM is to extract the temporal information or feature from the sequential data. This is the normalized confusion matrix uh, with the 15 different classes and uh, the average pixel base accuracy was 80 about 86 percent and for eight of these crops like winter wheat winter a uh, winter barley winter wheat winter rye uh, winter rapeseed spring barley maize um, sugar beet potato and background we got a high performance i mean the accuracy were more than 84 percent so it was a high accuracy for these classes uh, and uh, but for some cases like green grain, spring barley, peas, permanent grass, and winter triticale, because of the complexity of these classes and uh, also the uh, low number of the data set uh, we had for these classes, we didn't get a good accuracy, and so the accuracy weren't very well in these classes. But for the these crops, uh, these eight crops, we had a high performance. This is the IOU index that shows the accuracy and it's, it's same with the normalized confusion matrix just it shows the performance of the network and how this network how well this network work and uh, yes for critical uh, green green spring barley peas and uh, permanent grass we hadn't high uh, performance in these images you can see the positive impact of temporal information in the images so the performance of our approach or proposed approach in the end of the August and July were significantly better than the previous months like June and May and it's reasonable and it makes sense because uh, in the end of the growth season or growth stage for the different crops we have a, all of the previous information from the uh, 
previous months. So the network used all of the, this information to predict the, for instance, the last images in last month. So it's reasonable to have a high performance or a lower error in the end of the August compared with the previous month because we have a much more uh, much information about the uh, satellite data in the end of the August compared with previous months. So this uh, figure shows the uh, positive impact of the temporal information and uh, we can conclude that if we need a high performance to analyze a satellite data, at least Sentinel-1 data, we need all of the, this temporal information. So the second part of the network convolutional system is so important for this network if we need to have a high accuracy. And also here you can see a different, uh, you can see the color bar for different crop types and with the different colors. <clears throat> this is the classification confidence. This image shows that, uh, shows that the, the confidence is lowest in the boundary of the each uh, field. Uh, so in the boundary of each field, we don't have a high confidence because we don't have an accurate ground truth data set for the border for almost all crops. But inside the field, it's another story because inside the field, we have a ground truth data set. I mean, correct and true ground truth data set. So the network can train very well based on the inside of each field, but in the border, we have some error. And also in the border, we have a high contrast between the, for instance, the this edge and the uh, neighborhood pixel. So it's a bit difficult for the network to predict the uh, border with high confidence and also with high uh, accuracy. But for the uh, ins uh, for inside the field, we have a high confidence and we can trust the result of the model. This is, I think, uh, this image is, is for spring oats, but for almost all crops, we have a same story and it is uh, the process of the uh, training was same for all of them. So these results are same for all of the crops we define in this project and paper. And here, this table shows some perspective of uh, current research or our approach with the, in relation to other study that analyze multi-temporal sentinel data. And uh, one of the advantages of this study, we defined the high number of classes compared with the previous study. So it means our problem is more complex compared with the other uh, previous studies. And <clears throat> The classification accuracy in our case was 86%, but for the other uh, studies with the lower number of the classes, we have a different level of the accuracy. Uh, just in this um, paper that published in 2018, in the Kumana uh, that uses Sentinel-1 with the eight, uh, with the 11 different classes, that they, they use the recurrent neural network with uh, performance of 89%. So we implemented their approach on our data set here, and the accuracy wasn't very good. Uh, it was 71% while we got uh, 86%. So uh, that's why based on this uh, table, we can uh, approve that our approach at this moment, at least, is the method that uh, has a high number of the classes. I mean, our problem is more complex with the previous one. And also, we got a high performance compared with the other alternative state of the art for recognizing different crop types. So FCN and Conv LSTM had the higher performance with the previous studies in this field. OK, that's it. If, if you have uh, any question about uh, this paper or this part of the project, you can contact me with this email address. And uh, yeah, thank you for your listening.